गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पटेला क्लंक सिंड्रोम सो पटेलो फीमोरियल कैपिटस आफ्टर टोटल नी आर्थो प्लस जी आई ऑल आई रिकमेंड ऑल ऑफ यू टू रीड दिस वेरी नाइस रिव्यू आर्टिकल बाय डेविड कॉन्ड्रेड फ्रॉम डेनवर इन यूएस एंड इन व्हिच ही ब्यूटीफुली एक्सप्लेन्स अबाउट द पैथोमैकेनिक्स एंड हाउ डज द पटेला क्लंक हैपेंस नाउ द पटेला क्लंक सिंड्रोम यूजुअली प्रेजेंट्स एट एन एवरेज ऑफ 12 मंथ्स आफ्टर टोटल नी आर्थो प्लस जी The symptoms are patellofemoral knee pain and complaints of knee popping and catching sensation. On physical examination, you will hear a painful palpable pop or catch as the knee extends in about 40 degrees of flexion. For 12 months post TKR, we can see that there is a significant clamp at about 30 to 40 degrees of angle. Now, what is the high risk factor for a patella clamp syndrome? a high intercondylar box ratio a previous knee surgery a reduced patella tendon length a thinner patella component that is a reduced patella and patella component composite thickness and smaller femoral components now if you talk about the technical risk factors if the, if the patient has a post operative patella baja that is a thicker tibial insert a anterior placement of the tibial tray is smaller and flexed femoral components thick plastic bearing increased posterior condylar offset these all are the factors which lead to a significant development of a patella clamp syndrome now patella component should be placed as superior as possible to avoid the unresurfaced bone in contact with the femoral component that is one but it should not be over and so that means if it should not extend superiorly beyond the superior border of the patella there should be no over resection of the patella that means you use the largest patella component fitting the resected bone you should avoid the over stuffing of the patella femoral joint and you should resect any uncovered lateral patella facet to avoid post operative anterior knee pain and patella capitis if you talk about the prosthetic based risk factors it is high in the ps knee and it is a high in uh, in knee joints with high intercondylar box ratio a low ratio is good so if there is a higher transitional height from trochlear groove to the intercondylar box that is it is in the ps type of joint the chances of patella clunk are much much higher so intercondylar box ratio is the ratio of the height of the intercondylar box vis a vis ap height of the femoral component now as far as the preventive measures are concerned you need to reduce the inter, uh, intercondylar box ratio better prosthetic design use of a thicker patella component avoid over resection of the patella and you can you should debride the fibrocyanoval tissue at the time of knee arthroplasty so these are the different knee joints and different chances of this the chances are much higher in a ps knee specifically the ib2 design and the ps pfc sigma design so this is a key step you should always remove the synovium at the superior pole of the patella that is a very key step and you should not miss this step while doing a total knee arthroplasty Now there are three types of patella clank. The type one is a classical patella clank in which there is an isolated fibrous nodule, and this at about 30 to 40 deg- 45 degrees of full extension of the nodule catches on the anterior flange of the femoral processes, and this leads into a clank and painful range of motion. Type two is a variety of a generalized hypertrophic synovitis, and you can see the metal surface on the lower part, so which which is which is actually shows the mirror image. now type 3 is a combination of type 1 and 2 that means you have fibrous nodule along with the hypertrophic synovitis now this is a small surgical video which demonstrates the significant hypertrophic uh, synovium on the superior pole of the patella and this it should be ideally be uh, approached with a arthroscopic resection of the this fibrosynovial tissue that is the best way to approach that thank you